Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel where we are going to continue and in today's video we are going to be focusing on how to create a renderer plugin. If you feel a bit confused at this point, don't worry, just go ahead and watch the videos in this playlist. Now, what we are doing currently is we are creating the custom plugins for the art engine. And in the previous videos, we created an inputs plugin, a generator plugin, and today we'll focus on creating a renderer plugin. So just a brief recap, what we are busy doing is using these new plugins in this index.ts file. We've got the word list input and a word phrase generator. The purpose of this setup is to take a list of words like this and at the end of the day produce fake seed phrases. So these are just seed phrases, you cannot use them, but it's to uh, illustrate what the art engine can do with custom plugins. And as it stands this far, we are taking this data, putting it through the inputs plugin, which gives us back this structure. After we have this, the generator runs and then transforms this data to this structure. And now we're going to create our renderer, which is going to consume this data and then create a next step for us in our process. Let's get going. Before we start coding, it's important to understand what renderers do. Now, inputs, of course, they get the data source for us. Generators mutate that data and determine how the attribute should be rendered uh, or combined it in, in that case. Whereas renderers is the step before the exporters. And a good way to think of a renderer is to think of what should happen to the data after it's been generated. Should it export some kind of image file or video file, uh, or should it have attributes in just plain text? Whatever the case might be, this usually happens in the renderers, and if there is media files involved that can be cached, this will be saved to a temp folder. If it's simply attributes, this also gets cached in the JSON cache file. However, the renderer does most of the work in this process. It, ex it kind of exports, but not really. It saves the uh, almost finalized data or the media files. And on top of it, it allows for asynchronous behavior. So essentially, if there is ever a renderer that exists that works with a 3D program, and everyone knows 3D uh, programs tend to render for quite some time, the art engine can make use of that. And in that step, the renderer will wait for these images to be rendered from a 3D program source before it can go to the next step. The next step being the exporters, which we'll cover in the next video, but essentially they just output the final uh, look and feel of the data. Maybe it copies from the temp folder, maybe it renames some files, or maybe it just arranges it in a final configuration for you to use. Okay, let's get back to coding. The first thing we're gonna do is head over to this example file in the renderers folder. And I'm simply going to rename this as maybe um, the phrase renderer. And I think that is a fitting name because we have the word phrase generator. And because we already have the phrase, this is just phrase renderer. Let's also go ahead and rename the phrase renderer over here. Okay. So this is the default renderer that is given with the example. But in order for us to understand it fully, what I'm going to do is empty this function over here so that we can write this from scratch. And we can also maybe get rid of most of the stuff over here, just so that we can start off with a clean slate and we understand what we are doing. We can leave some of the imports as we can see, we're importing the path module and the FS module because we're going to be uh, reading and writing files as well. We then also get the renderers interfaces and a few other goodies which we are going to explain. The first thing that we probably need to do is change the generic value that is passed over here to the renderer interface. 
And this follows kind of the same principle as all the other plugins. So you should be used to this by now, just in case you're not. Uh, this class, this phrase renderer, will implement the renderer interface. And if we go to this, we can see it has a very similar look and feel to the generators where it has this in init function, it has a renderer function, and this again returns to us an items renderer, which is this, and it's an array of the key value pairs, as usual. The only real thing that is different is that in the props, we get the cache path, but we also get the attributes getter. This getter is here so that we can get the data from the generators uh, the values that the generators produced. But this is the nice thing about TypeScript. It can actually guide us along and tell us what it needs to implement. As long as you remember that your renderer plugin needs to implement the base class and it needs to return whatever custom value you specify. The first thing for us is to actually define this value. And I'm going to say this would be our path interface. Well, maybe we call it the path content interface because I want this interface or this value to have a path and the path is going to be uh, to the actual file that is saved in the cache when we concatenate or when we actually take this value and we are also going to have a content so content and this content will be of an object and the object maybe will be a phrase itself of string array and that's it now why do we have the path to the actual values that we're going to save and we also have the content here um, isn't this redundant because technically the stuff that's going to be saved in the json file is going to be exactly the same as this and to that point yes it is technically we do not need to save the contents in a file uh, before we're going to use it in the exporters. However, for this example, I just want to show a flow where potentially at this point there might be some media files and therefore you would need to save this in the cache temp file. And that's why even though this example technically can only require us to save the content inside of the state, um, I am going to export this as a JSON file and then make use of that JSON file in the exporter as we go. So the next step for us will be to actually replace this example custom interface with our new interface and here at the bottom as well. Of course the renderer function is not satisfied yet but we'll get there. What we have next is we are defining two variables. The first one is the attributes getter. This is essentially going to be for us to get all the values from the generators, what's been generated before. And this follows the type of items data manager get attributes. And that's why we import this here at the top and we just have to specify it in here. And next we get this temp renderer dir. Now you can call it whatever you need to. However, this variable is going to essentially be the path to where we're going to store our temp files, which is essentially going to live in this cache folder. And that's why we need to make use of these constants. Both of these are banked, so we need to provide these values. And where we will do this is in this init function here. And we can do so because we get some interesting props. So if we just go and see what the renderer input props are, we can see it's a seed, uh, we get the cache path, and we get the actual attributes getter. So we can essentially just hook these up. So we can say this dot attributes getter is equal to the props uh, dot attributes getter like so and for our uh, temp file so we can say our temp directory is going to be equal to path so we're going to use the path module to join uh, a few uh, values together so that they make a proper path and that's going to be the props cache path and the cache now this is important, the renders temp directory. This is going to um, equal our temp directory. Now I would love to see what contents is in the attributes getter. So let's go ahead and actually 
uh, get the content. So there's a few things we need to do. We first need to satisfy this renderer, otherwise it's not going to run. But also we need to go to our index and in the renderers actually uh, create our new uh, phrase renderer. So it's the phrase renderer and we're going to call this in here. So let's go ahead and satisfy this interface. So the first thing I would like to do is start off with what we are going to actually get back or return from this function and this will be renders. Uh, this needs to be of type items renders. So if we just refresh our minds, this looks like this, which should be uh, a key and value pair. And the value pair should be again of items property with kind uh, and data as an array. So we are going to do that. And we are also going to pass in this. So now that we have that, let's just maybe equal this to an empty object. And at the bottom, we can simply return the, the renders like so. So this should satisfy this and nothing is happening yet, but at least this allows us to do interesting things like maybe logging out what this dot attributes getter gives us. So let's have this and now in the terminal run our project and we should see that we get this function and that is correct because now we actually need to call it, right? We, this is not just a value. So let's call the attributes getter, run it again. And now we can see that from the generators, we get our keys and values, which is kind and data, exactly what is in this generators JSON. And that makes sense. So we know that in our renderer, we now have access to what the generators gave us. Fantastic. This means that we can now loop over these attributes getter values and actually mutate them or export to this uh, temp file and so on. But the first thing that we need to do is maybe do a check. And this check will be to see if the file or the folder actually exists. Because if there is no folder that exists um, that we want to export data to uh, or render data to, it's just simply going to fail. So the first thing we need to do is check if fx exists sync. And what we're going to check is this dot um, the temp. So we're going to check this and we're not going to see if this is the case. So let's make it inverted. So essentially this line is saying that if this directory in here does not exist, what should we do? Well, to make sure that it is there, we can say that we need to make the directory and we simply make this directory. And now that we have this, I want to show you something. In this cache folder, there is no temp directory. So if we save this and run the engine, we can see that a temp folder was created for us. And that is exactly what we want. So that is good. Now we can go ahead and loop over uh, our objects and the attributes getter to start uh, compiling what we need for this render process. As we've seen, the attributes getter gives us back these key value pairs. So what's the best way for looping over this? Well, we can make use of a for loop and we can then uh, extract these values. So we can say that we are going to have an ID and then maybe we also have attributes and we can say that the ID will be the key and the attributes will be our values. Now this could be of object dot entries. Now object dot entries will allow us to pass in our attributes getter when we call this. And now when we have this, this should technically be able to loop over um, all of our kind of entries, but also give us the ID uh, separate from the attributes. And I just want to make a quick test just to make sure we are on the right path. I'm going to log out the ID and let's also log out the attributes separately. Let's quickly run this and we can see that indeed we get ID zero and the array of attributes, which has this kind and data structure uh, objects inside of them. And that is good to see. So 
Now we know that that works. Now a key takeaway for renderers in general is that when the data comes in, we can see that it's an array. And now we are going to heavily base this off the kind. Remember in the previous video, I said that this kind would be a very uh, good defining mechanism for defining what data is being used uh, in this object. Because remember, there can be many different kinds and data sets coming through the generating process, depending what previous generators ran. So it's our responsibility in our own renderer to make sure that we actually get the supported uh, assets or attributes that we are going to work with. And maybe this could even be, in our case, phrases. This is very important to understand if you want to build good renderers. Because technically, there could be many different kinds of data coming in. As we can see, we only have one type of kind, but yet this is still living in an array for each key. So technically, you can maybe at this point filter out all the data that you want to work with, uh, or you can maybe find one piece of data. Maybe you want to pass an array to the exporters later on, and this is where you can work with it. So this is really where you can experiment um, and see what you can do and build out your renderers because technically you can also make use of image data at this point. But for our use case, we can maybe say that we are looking for a phrase. So we can say that let's look for the found phrase and this will now be equal to maybe these attributes that we need to loop over. So we can say that attributes.find and we want to find an attribute that has what? Well, we actually want to see if the kind of this attribute, so the attribute dot kind is equal to this uh, string. And that way we will know that we have found an item that is uh, compatible with what we want in this renderer. So just to get rid of some of these errors, let's quickly give it some proper types. So for this attribute, this will be an items property interface, which would essentially, let's just give it any, because we know it has a kind and data, and that's what we want to check. For this attributes over here, we know that this is going to come in as a certain type, and that's also going to be uh, as any. However, this time it's an array. And this will just satisfy um, TypeScript. So that's fine. For now, I want to see if we actually found some data. So I'm going to log out this found phrase and let's run it. And indeed, we see that, yes, we get the data of the index one and also index two. Just keep in mind, like I said, we have this data now and we can use it, but you can also uh, filter and return an array and work with the array. So there's many possibilities that can happen at this point. And just to rectify myself, sorry, this is index zero and index one, but all right. Now, what is next? Well, the only way that we want to ever do something right now is if we actually have a found phrase, correct? So. Let's firstly create an if block to make sure that we do. Otherwise, it should just skip this and do nothing. So in here is where we're going to now. Um, firstly, export to our temp directory. And then we're also going to populate um, some of the data in memory for the exporters to use potentially. So let's go and write the file. So what we can do is say write file sync from fs. And the first thing we need to pass is the uh, path. So now, uh, what is our path? Well, we're going to say path.join again. And this time we're going to join the directory. So the temp directory that we know does exist. And we're also going to pass it in the file. So the file that we want to save is going to be our id.json, like so. And now that we have this, we can specify the content that we want to write to this file. So what is the content? Well, firstly, we're going to JSON uh, stringify something. And the content we're going to stringify is our found phrase dot data, like so. 
And just to make it look pretty, we're going to pass null and two. This has to do with formatting. And this line should now technically write to us uh, to our temp folder. So we can actually test this out. In our terminal, let's go ahead and run the art engine. And now if we open our temp file, guess what we see? We see the data over here. Beautiful. Okay, so this is working, but uh, we also want the renders, JSON, to have the data much like the generators and the inputs for in case the exporter needs this data. Uh, otherwise, it will not know what to render next. So we need to make sure that we also uh, take care of that. And to do so, what we need to do is simply say that the renders on ID is going to equal the array of an object with the kind as usual, which is going to be string and the data. Now, the data that we want to export here, remember, has to have a path. So at this point, we need to specify a path and we also need the content like we said we'll get. Now, the content we know because that would be this dot data. But we don't know the path. We do have the path, but it's not really nicely written. So what we could do here is say we need the export or the temp file path is equal to that. And here we can then specify this and we can also replace this variable. This is also way better to extract some of this logic into their own variables. And lastly, what we can do is give this data a kind that is created via this renderer. In this case, the phrase renderer v1. This will tell our exporter what kind of data it should expect. Okay, and that is it. If we now run the file or the actual program, everything should work. We should now see that our renderer's JSON is populated. It has the full path of the file in the temp directory as well as the contents. And now it's up to the exporter to decide if it wants to make use of the path or this content. So we'll get to that next. So as a final test, let's go ahead and change the parameters. We are going to say that we want four phrases to be generated. The minimum word length for each word should be at least six. And then let's say we want this to consist of five words in each phrase. So save this, go ahead and run it, and let's see what happens. So we take this word list, the inputs give us this, then the generators generate this set of data, and now our renderers is going to export it like so, giving us the path and the contents. And we can see in our temp folder, here is the set of phrases. So now it's time for us to move on to the exporters and create uh, the final export. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave me a like, comment below, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.